Alright, say you're 21 years old, you're seven months pregnant by your high school sweetheart that you've been together with since you were in 10th grade. He's two years older than you, so you're 21 and 23 years old. Within like three months of your pregnancy, he, do, he just says he doesn't want the baby. When this baby was planned, y'all agreed to have this baby, y'all made this baby, y'all lived together, everything. So you're telling him like, no, I'm already three months, I didn't hurt the baby heartbeat, this, this, that, and the third. I'm attached to my baby, I'm keeping my baby. So he's like, okay, you're keeping your baby, I will leave. He left. Left you the apartment, right? Fast forward four months. Now you're seven months pregnant. Your baby daddy randomly just shows up at the apartment. You get home from work one day and he in the kitchen making some food. You're not thinking nothing of it, but you ask him like, where you been, blah, blah, blah. You really don't even care where he been because it's just like, you happy to finally see your baby father and your first love. So the day goes on, y'all all find in the end, everything's smooth. You cook dinner, y'all watch TV together, y'all end up falling asleep. You wake up in the middle of the night to go pee. You see his phone sitting on the nightstand next to you. So what do you do? You grab it. You grab his phone thinking like, okay, I'm going to hurry up, go through it, put it back. So you change your case on his, so you put your case on his phone and put his case on your phone and plug it back in so he would think that his phone is still right there if he was to wake up. You go into the rest, the bathroom and you pee and you lock the door, you turn on the water and you start going through his phone. You put him to go to his birthday and you start going through the phone. So you're going through the phone. You see messages from girls. You're not really worried about it. Like you don't, like it's not really nothing too serious. Like they just talk and chat and you get what I'm saying? It's nothing that's like sexual in nature. So you start screenshotting all the messages, sending them to yourself and then deleting the messages. Then you come up on a group chat that says bang bros until you go back five months prior. You start seeing my shit came back positive. So you're like, what came back positive? Everybody else, mine's not positive, mine's not positive. Um, two of the other boys in there say mine is positive. So you read up a little more. You find out that your home, your boy be daddy and his four homeboys that you've been knowing since you were in 10th grade has been sleeping amongst each other and they have HIV. And that is the reason why your baby daddy does not want your baby anymore. So you start throwing up all over the bathroom, screaming, crying. The baby daddy busts in the bathroom, says, what's going on? What's the problem? What's wrong? Are you okay? He looks and he sees his phone in your hand and he breaks your fucking jaw. So you pass out and you wake up a few hours later or a little bit later. Your baby daddy is nowhere to be found and your house is completely trashed. All your baby stuff is cut up. Everything is trashed. It's bad. And now you're almost eight months pregnant, worried about if you have HIV, worried about if your baby has HIV, and you really have nobody to go to because this man that moved you away from your family messed up all the ties you have with your family. That's the case of my old classmate, Armani. She wanted me to get on here and shed some light on her story and some awareness. If you are a male who is in that type of stuff, you need to let it be known. You don't just be out here sleeping with anybody and then turn around and go sleep with your girlfriend. You don't, I don't, I really don't like down low men. And I wouldn't say I don't like gay men because I love them. I do not like down low men. And I honestly don't like gay men who mess with down low men because it's like, you get what I'm saying? But everybody send prayers out to Armani and I'll probably try to get you guys an update in a few months or a few weeks or whatever. All right, y'all, let's clear some things up about Armani's story. I am not Armani. Everyone in the comments is like, oh, girl, this is your story. This is your story. It is not my story. I'm only 21 years old. So if I said in a story that she's 21 years old and she's seven, eight months pregnant, don't y'all think that y'all would see me on here seven, eight months pregnant? I'm confused. And then some people are like, um, why are you mad? Because we think it's you. You should have been more specific. I was very specific when I said Armani. If it was my story, I would have said it was my story. Y'all are trying to turn the voice into the victim. And y'all do that all the time when somebody gets on here advocating for somebody. But you're not going to do that with me. Furthermore, you're not going to get mad because I'm telling you I'm not going through something that tragic. That's not, I'm not going through it. So it's it's even more sick that you're mad that I'm not the one that's going through it. And then you, everybody's getting mad because I don't have every single detail to the story. When this, when that, when that, I told you what she told me. I posted the screenshots and everything. So you can't get mad at me because I don't know every single detail. I not seven, eight months pregnant. So I don't know when they do full panel test or this test or that test. I don't know. And then everybody's like, oh, well, why don't she tell her own story? Not everybody does social media, love. That's why she reached out to me and I posted the screenshots. Everybody doesn't do social media. And then it just happened. She has to come to terms with what happened. Maybe one day she will get on here and do a story time. But today she's not doing it. She asked me to do it.
to shed light on the situation and let people know like this stuff does happen. From what I'm understanding so far, her and the baby are fine. She doesn't have any STDs. I don't think she slept with him after he came home that day. And then everybody's on here victim blaming. Oh, this why it's a three month rule. Oh, this, this, that, and third. Oh, she moved cross town country with a man that she doesn't, isn't married to and planned a baby. Yeah, like people do stuff like that all the time. I don't know what she was going through in her family life, her personal life. I don't know what she was going through. I only know what she told me. Stop getting on this internet acting like you're just so perfect. Like you haven't moved or did something for a guy before that you didn't want to do. Stop acting like you just know what guy you're talking to holds history because you don't. And stop trying to make the voice into the victim. I'm going to say it once. And this is my last time saying it. I am not Armani. The story is not about me. She asked me to tell her story. She doesn't want any help. She doesn't want anything. She has what she needs. She just wants everybody to be made aware that stuff like this goes on. You got to do better as a community because everybody on there that's victim blaming and trying to make the voice the victim are women. Like, I'm confused. Do better. Thank you. And one last thing. I like, why are you saying her name? The girl's name is not Armani at all. Why would I get on here and say her name when she clearly said, hey, Milan, this is such and such. Please don't say my name.